Free Golden Birds for War Thunder. Inspect the app in the description below. The Air Ministry presents the all-new Blackburn Firebrand as it prepares for yet another flawless takeoff. The pilot awaits the deck controller's go. Mm, go! And it's off on what is sure to be yet another successful mission with Pilot Officer Nigel C. Woodstock at the controls. And look at that, it's up in one. Why, those geniuses over at Blackburn have done it again! Today's war-winning mission, a daring torpedo run. Why, no trouble for the Blackburn Firebrand. And before long, it's home in time for tea. The all-new Blackburn Firebrand is a dream to land, with all-round perfect visibility. Another splendid landing, hey, Nigel? Yeah, it's my best so far, actually. Jolly good, but that's not all the Firebrand can do. A 109 on the prowl. Mincemeat for the firebrand. Watch out, Fritz. Oh, Scheiße. Ich wurde getroffen. Das muss einer von den Niegelnagel neuen Firebrands sein. The Blackburn Firebrand. Remember, Jerry's got nothing like it. Now, I don't know about you, but I found that propaganda video to be as convincing as a North Korean missile launch. It was completely unbelievable. Which is why I plan to dedicate the rest of this video to conducting my own evaluations about the Blackburn Firebrand. Yes. Basically, we're going to test the aircraft in the following areas. Carrier operations, because it needs them. Yes. Torpedo attacks, because it carries torpedoes. Naval rocket attacks, because... Well, it carries rockets dive bombing, which is roaring good fun and definitely not dangerous. Then ground attack, flight handling, looks which are doubly important, which is why it gets two boxes, and then firepower and durability. At the end, we'll mark it out of ten, and if it passes, which it will, uh, it'll be proven without bias that it's the best aircraft ever and another brilliant British design. Yes. Well then, tally-ho and up we go. Hands off socks, hands on cock, that's not the right way round. Then again, we are on a British aircraft carrier in the Navy, which means it's also the size of a custard cream. No, no, and that's a bad crash. Uh, but luckily for us, the guns have doubled as a safety barrier, which is a feature on all British ships, which are all very safe and definitely big enough to operate these aircraft off of. Yes. It's just too big and too wide. I mean, fancy leaving a conning tower that large in the middle of the deck like that. To avoid it, I'm having to initiate a vigorous left-hand yank of the joystick. Uh, and once again, the conning tower came right out of my blind spot and assaulted my aircraft. At least the firebrand is incredibly durable. It has designated crumble zones in the wings that enable them to just come off as soon as anything touches them. Yes, there's no need for airbags in the firebrand. Anything that could crush you to death simply comes off and flies away, out to sea. It's all very safe. And here comes my loyal squadron mate, Coke Spray. And here he comes. He's done it, he's landed. And as a completely impartial umpire on deck, I can verify he's done it. And, uh, well, I declare a complete pass for the firebrand. Now, the logical next part of any mission is likely a daring torpedo run upon a Hun ship. And I can confidently say this aircraft is the best torpedo bombing air superiority dogfighting fighter bomber I've ever flown. Why are you having trouble scoring torpedo hits against ships? Worry no more, as the Firebrand's stupendously tall tail section doubles as a cunning form of crosshair, with which you can aim your torpedoes. Simply boot the rudders onto your target and you're good to go. That is unless your target's moving. Yes, and then it's anyone's best guess, really. Also, getting out of the cockpit and climbing your way to the tail section to aim the device is a bit tricky. It can be a tad bloody slippy at 200 miles an hour. Anyway, moving on, you might have spotted the torpedo we are expertly concealing under our belly. Well, I happen to know it's a bloody big one and should be enough to knock out one of these banana boats. Yes, 
Now, I should mention, this is a live game, and so there are some unsavory characters on the enemy team who want to use my balls for ping pong practice. So we best get the duck in the water, so to speak. Here we go, and get ready. Oh, God! Drop! And torpedo away. This is fine. This is all fine. And aha! A stunning success. Yes, that's a pass. Now, about this pickle we find ourselves in. Uh, this is why they call it the firebrand, I assume. It's never happened before. And a nice gentle dip in the pond. And nice and safe. What a pass. The Firebrand is effectively a flying tank. Its arsenal knows no bounds as it carries an array of laser-accurate rockets. Here we go. Yes! Good hits there. They're practically fly-by-wire, they're so accurate. And, aha! There we go! A pass and, oh, good god. Um, the, that ship had no business being that tall. It's intrusive to overhead aircraft. And, ah, uh, we're fine. That's a pass. That's a, that's a pass. Now, as anyone with a worthless historical degree will tell you, dive bombing is incredibly important. It's a fact that the J87 Stuka was copied from Blackburn's Firebrand. Junkers just got their prototype into production eight years earlier than Blackburn. Ask any historian. Now we're dive bombing that pillbox. We're gonna blow it away. Yes, oh God, that's not gone well, but the bombs have gone and the die have been cast. Uh, this fire will soon blow over. Don't worry about this. We got an AA gun. Yes, we showed them what for. That's a pass. And oh, that's come off. Oh, God. Uh, well, we got uh, the AA gun uh, that killed us. That's a pass. That is a pass. Right, so now it's time to use some of our brilliant guided rockets on that there Jerry pillbox. Shouldn't be a problem. Now, some people will point out that the Firebrand's rockets aren't guided. Uh, and they're woefully inaccurate, falling almost at random anywhere they damn well please. But that, that is what's so brilliant about them. No German pillbox is safe when a rocket could drop out of the sky seemingly anywhere at any time. No German knows where they're going to land. None of the pilots know either, and they're firing them. It's a complete morale crusher. Yes. And now, utilizing the Firebrand's incredible maneuverability, we're on target for another attack. Here we go. Bombs away. Take that, Fritz. And look at that. For the price of just one Firebrand, we've destroyed an entire German gun. That's a pass. Now, as everybody knows, the Firebrand was originally developed as a thoroughbred fighter, and so let's put it to the test against that Japanese bomber over there. Yes. But before engaging in a maneuvering fight, he must survive the onslaught of our 420mm cannon. Here we go. Fire! Fire! Yes! Yes! Oh dear, well, uh, to be fair, that Japanese pilot really pulled some snazzy footwork. He's obviously an ace of some kind. Well, he's not flying a firebrand, so he's bound to lose. This thing turns like a spitfire. In fact, it basically is a spitfire. Basically. Ah, now you see this is developing into a distinctly boring situation. He's obviously mastered the use of the wind to blow himself onto our tail, uh, in which would otherwise be a completely one-sided dogfight. But fear not, my viewers, we have air brakes for a reason. That's correct, we're making him overshoot, and his gunner just can't hit us. We're too small and too maneuverable. Yes, look, and they've given up. Right, now it's time to utilize the Firebrand's quick response rate at low speeds. Here we go, accelerate. Acceleration. Oh yes, we're catching the watchful Japanese airman completely off guard. Look, he's basically baffled. He has no idea what's going on. Uh, yet we've confused him uh, to the point where he's inadvertently flown right onto our tail again. Well, no trouble for us. We're going to launch a long pitched maneuver in this direction uh, at some speed. Yes, uh, I've now maneuvered away from the target, out of range. Therefore, winning the dogfight. That's how it works. Yes. What a complete success that really was. A complete pass. And now for the firepower and durability test. We're going heads up against an IL-10. Here we go. Fire. Yes, good hits there. Yes, and apparently we were hit, but I barely noticed. The aircraft didn't bat an eyelid. It's a sturdy frame. And here we go. Heads up against an IL-185. And yes. 
good firepower, good durability. It's built like a tank. And now, there's an IL-10 behind us. Uh, now, he has hit us, but the aircraft is performing brilliantly. Yes, uh, bits are coming off, but they're designed to come off. It stops the shot, and that's what it's meant for. It appears we have been shot down. But let's be fair, I mean, the Russians were on bloody good form. They were on bloody good form right there. God. Oh, dear. Still a pass, though. And now on to the results. Well, bugger me with a prize-winning fruitcake. The all-new Blackburn Firebrand has passed our independent and completely impartial evaluation with full marks. Can you believe it? Who would have seen that coming? Good God. Wow, I mean, that really makes it the best aircraft in the game. Nay, in the world as we know it. But sadly, as we're no longer in the EU, uh, nobody else has allowed them. They're ours. But on a serious video ending note, this aircraft is utter bollocks, as was the entire narrative of this video, which I sincerely hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please especially like via Carrier Pigeon. Yes, and hopefully I will shoot it down. Um, over the last few weeks I've been on holiday doing various things, and, uh, well, I haven't been able to thank you all very sincerely for bravely breaching the 100,000 subscriber milestone barrier, which we have, and it, 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 it boggles the mind. You see, I'm not often lost for words, but at this moment I really am. So, uh, thank you. And finally, I'd also like to thank a man known simply as Peter on Patreon for his support. Yes. Anyway, cheerio!